The Amped EV Podcast is sponsored by Autel Energy. Visit autelenergy.com for more information. Hello and welcome back to the Amped EV Podcast. My name is David Sickles. I am the editor for The Buzz. And I am Jason Morgan, content director for Fleet Equipment. David. Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm great. How are you? We are going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. Mm. Data. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know that is fun. That, I know this is the, and, and people are rolling their eyes like, this guy yeah, we will talk not about shut like up about Excel data. spreadsheets here. Oh, no, 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 no. Real world, real life data. Okay. And that's how fun. it relates to EV adoption. Cool. Okay. We're going to talk with Charlotte Argue. Senior Manager of Sustainable Mobility at Geotab. Now, Geotab is clearly known for being one of the world's largest telematics devices. Like they have like millions of telematics devices out there on the road in passenger cars, pickup trucks, yeah. heavy, heavy duty trucks, medium lots duty trucks. Lots of data. Lots of data. They have an EV suitability assessment tool that you can go on there and say, is EV right for me? That's, I love that's this what thing. we're going to answer. Is EV right for you? Is yeah. it right for you? Yeah. I, I don't know. Is it right for me? Sure. Maybe. She's I'll gonna use tell. the tool. She's going to tell us how it works. So let's jump into that. Okay. Carla, it is so great to see you and connect again. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thanks for having me. So we're going to talk about Geotab's EV suitability assessment tool. Uh, it's a tool that's been out there uh, for people to use for a while. You keep evolving it, adding now pickup trucks into the tool. But before we dive into the specifics, can we just back up on you? You lay some groundwork and give us an overview of what the tool is, how do I use it, and, and what does it mean to me? Yeah, so the EV suitability assessment tool, it's really a tool for fleet managers. Um, and essentially, you can think of it as a EV recommendation tool. Um, for fleets to de determine where EVs are best suited in their current operations. Um, so what the tool does is it looks at the driving behavior of the current vehicles in the fleet, and then it pinpoints where EVs would be the best fit. Um, and to do that, it kind of looks at two different angles. So the first question we try to answer is, what, um, what vehicles out there, what EVs that are available on the market today, could do the job of that vehicle based on the range? So we really ask about range capability, um, looking at the daily distance driven for those fleet vehicles. Um, and we can look back at anything from a couple of months to an entire year's worth of data uh, to determine whether or not there would be EVs that could do the job, assuming, now this is um, a, a little bit interesting, where it assumes that fleets aren't going to want to go out of their way during the day to stop and charge. So we kind of do a conserve estimate for the basis of the tool and say, if you're only charging at night, the job that you need to do during the day is the EV range capable. And then the second factor that we look at is whether or not the EVs would actually save the fleet money. So for that, um, we look at a life cycle cost comparison. If the fleet manager were to procure a new EV and replace that ICE vehicle or that gas vehicle with a new EV compared to if they were to go out and buy their tip traditional best in class or best fit gas car, um, would the fleet overall spend more money or spend less money if it was an EV versus an ICE? So uh, my understanding is that this tool, it, you began with passenger vehicles and SUVs, now you're adding pickup trucks. What are some of the unique variables between these types of vehicles in relation to your tool that, that matter as far as whether or not somebody might want to switch to EV? Yeah, so for, for when we simulate um, the range capabilities of these EVs in essentially in the ICE vehicle duty cycle, um, whether or not it's a pickup truck or a regular car or sedan or um, SUV, what, what we like to do is wherever possible, we use real world efficiency data that we've seen and modeled over over time. Um, so for the light duty passenger cars, we've we have many years of um, seeing real trip data and real efficiency data of those EVs. So we can take into account things like how does temperature, how does local climate uh, impact the real world or the true range rather than just assuming rated range. Um, and the same comes with pickup trucks. So as pickup electric pickups started to come to the market, um, what we're starting to build is our modeling tool for these 
real world trips um, that are driven by these electric pickups to start to uh, model out how these vehicles will actually uh, perform. And uh, so we're, we're continuously improving on those models. Um, a lot of these pickups are very new, so uh, we're having to start with rated range and then start applying what we know about um, other factors and how it impacts range. And over time, we're going to improve the models. Um, but there's not a lot of differences in terms of um, some of the typical factors like climate or temperature. Pickups respond in very similar ways in terms of their efficiency as a light duty car. So um, we're, we've seen that we've been able to apply a lot of the same types of assumptions or types of um, f multiplying factors across with the pickups as well. Right. Okay. So, so all the all the information that you've had historically with, I mean, you're you're up to like millions at this point, mil millions of vehicles on the Geotab platform, right? Uh, so you're able to kind of build those models and, and see what they're really doing out in the real world. Because we talk about a lot about range anxiety and I have range anxiety, right? But what am I really driving and what do I really need and how do I really make that fit? Uh, it's super cool to see how you're doing that. Um, do you see this changing the conversation when people talk about EVs, uh, either either through how they're using the tool or even conversations you're having with with customers and there is hesitancy there. How does it, how does the tool help change any any hearts and minds uh, of the customers? Yeah, I think where a tool like this comes into, it, or where we see the most traction or um, resonance with fleet operators is really those fleets who haven't had a lot of exposure to EVs to date. Um, it's a new it's a new technology. It's an emerging market. There's still a lot of questions around range, range anxiety. Um, can this vehicle actually do the job that I need it to do. And um, I, I'm sure you've come across the like range gasometer idea. Right. Like what, <laughs> what if the car is giving you a certain range, is that actually what you're going to get in um, or like, and it keeps changing as you as you drive. So um, what we find, it's actually quite similar to the consumer market I find with with fleet drivers and fleet operators, where the more they have exposure to EVs, the more confident they get in those vehicles and the less um, anxious they are about range. Mm -hmm. um, but with fleets who are just getting started, this is, even if it's a perceived, like range is a perceived barrier in a lot of cases, um, being able to provide them with that confidence and understanding, okay, this isn't just, you know, a, an average rated range that I should assume. It's, it's really what these vehicles are capable of of doing in real world scenarios. And then um, the fact that we're looking at their actual mileage and their actual daily utilization for their vehicles um, just provides that, that confidence or that peace of mind that, you know, this is data driven. They're just, they're not, um, it's taking as a guesswork, I guess, mm -hmm. on, on that decision. And one thing I'll say about range is it's not just about the confidence in the EV. It's also about the perceived distance that the existing fleet vehicles are driving. So if you ask a fleet operator, you know, how, what is the longest driving day you had in the last year with, you know, vehicles X, Y, and Z? Um, more often not, than not, they're going to overestimate that number. Um, so what we're able to do is say, well, actually, this is exactly how far you're driving every day. And um, we did a macro analysis of about 400,000 uh, light duty trucks, so pickups across our customer base to, to look at a year's worth of daily driving distance. Right. And about 50% never exceeded 280 miles oh, in wow. a single day for the entire year. Um, so that just provides a bit more yeah peace of mind of okay i while i think i might need a 600 mile range i actually need a 300 mile range or less right. um and then the other uh piece that i think this type of analysis really helps with is the challenge fleets are having with the higher capital cost or the upfront cost mm -hmm. so oftentimes you know with the procurement process you have two choices you have your your EV or you have your best-in-class um, gas vehicle replacement and looking at the sticker price of the two you know it's it's a lot harder to 
convince you know whoever's holding the purse to spend the extra money up front to to justify purchasing an electric vehicle right. um so what this tool in fact does it flips that argument of i can't afford an ev on its head and says well actually in these situations you can't afford not to buy an hmm. ev because you're actually going to be saving money over the five year or seven year life cycle or may or maybe more um so you're losing money by not deciding to to switch this vehicle out for an electric so speaking of saving money, I wanted to bring up the Inflation Reduction Act and possible incentives coming from that. You know, how does that change the EV conversation as far as development, um, adoption, and you know, how does that change the equation when it comes to your tool? Yeah, I, so even when we look at the total life cycle cost um, and even where there is you know, a, a benefit for the EVs over the gas vehicles, uh, that capital cost is still a challenge. Um, so when the total cost of ownership is favorable, being able to bring down the um, upfront cost with incentives, that still makes a really uh, big difference for a lot of fleets. And then what we've seen for those um, situations where the duty cycle doesn't quite meet that total cost of ownership benefit, um, these incentives will just kind of tip the scale or tip the scale um, to prefer the EVs. So incentives, it's it's still a really important um, piece of the like the business case and the business model for fleets to justify going electric today. Um, and not just for the vehicles themselves, but for the charging infrastructure. So this is one thing for our total, um, our EV suitability assessment. We include the operational costs of charging but we exclude the upfront cost of actually installing that charger. And the reason why uh, we haven't included that in kind of this self-serve widget is that it can vary so dramatically from fleet to fleet and from facility to facility. So being able to calculate or um, estimate the capital cost of the infrastructure, it's, you're, just, you're not gonna get it, um, it's not gonna be right. It's, it's gonna be an average and averages in this case isn't gonna be right for, for that fleet. So um, the Inflation Reduction Act, the incentives, there's also incentives for the charging station um, piece, which can be a high capital cost for, for fleet operators um, or for, for facility managers. And um, that will help them get over that extra hurdle or barrier. Yeah, for sure. And I, and still a lot to unpack with the Inflation Reduction Act, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just talking, uh, I was with an OEM not too long ago, just talking about how you even put it into place, how it impacts maybe a purchase or lease or truck as a service or yeah. charging as a service. And like, there's still plenty of questions to answer there. Uh, but it sounds like you're tackling a lot of uh, real world questions, right? Those application questions, can the equipment do the job and what money am I going to make with it, I, which I think is at the heart of every fleet manager's business. So really great to connect with you and hear all about that. Uh, gave us a lot of good things to think about. I'm sure we will talk to you again uh, as this tool continues to evolve. Excellent. Well, thanks so much again. And yeah, I'm really amped to see what you have in the future. <laughs> Love there it. we go. Perfect. <laughs> well, it's great talking with you, Charlotte. We'll connect again soon. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> So there we go. Mm. I'm going to do hot takes first. Okay. Hot take. My favorite. <laughs> I love that everybody overestimates the amount of work they're yeah, doing. That's yeah. my favorite part. We're all doing more yeah. work. I did 10 <laughs> interviews today, by the way, <laughs> just for reference. 10 interviews. When you go back and roll the tape, you're like, no, sir, you did one. And you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I just oh, need yeah. a show that does one interview. That, yeah. that's, that's my range. But I love, you know, I love that because we do talk about range. You're right. I think that's something that we've, uh, we've addressed or alluded to before. It's like maybe you don't need that range. Right. You know, it's, right. but it, it's more of like a feeling and a, and a hand wringing and, and to her point, the the awareness or exposure to EVs and what they can offer. Yeah, it's the thought, you know, I want to have it in case I need it. Maybe I, I'm not running 600 miles a day, but if I do, if I, do. I really want that range. Uh, but, you know, when you're talking about something, this new type of technology where you're not really sure exactly where it's going to fit into your bottom line, you know, Going for that 600 range, maybe you really don't need it. Right. 
Right. Well, and you don't need to wait for it, right? The other thing she brought into the conversation was total cost of ownership over the vehicle life cycle. She mentioned a number of times that the capital, uh, the capital investment up front isn't, you know, it can be a hard pill to swallow, but for if you sure. look at it over the long term, then uh, uh, you can see where you can make some money there as a commercial operation. So I think it's cool. I might go mess around with it myself, see if I'm ready for EV. Are you ready for EV? I don't know. I'll mess around and see. All right. Well, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.